Hey there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SellerLounge.com and I'm going to do a few quick tutorials on how to shoot portraits at night under the stars. I have a handful of different photos to show you and uh, we'll start with this one for this video. This is going to be an example of a single exposure and how to get stars in the background of a portrait like this. Now in, in future videos we'll get into multiple exposures and you know varying your exposure, doing long exposures. Uh, but for this video let's start simple and let's talk about how to get a single shot like this that has at least a few stars in the background. I can't see the Milky Way, I can't see that many stars. Because, well I'm in suburbia anyways over here you can see the light pollution from the uh, cities and you can see there's still a little bit of sunset as well but there's plenty of stars in the sky here and this is as you can see it is a NEF file it's not a JPEG or a PSD so I didn't I didn't cheat and combine anything this is a single exposure here so let's talk about how to do something like this now the first thing I want to pull up is I want to pull up my information and show you what camera settings I was working with. I was at ISO 3200, one second and f2.8 on a 14 millimeter lens and this was, uh, you can see down here it says 750. I name my uh, images using the file naming in the camera to name what camera it is. So this is the D750. So all in all if you zoom in here you can see the noise levels aren't that bad. The, uh, the stars are pretty darn sharp and everything. But of course the more impressive thing is the fact that these guys are not blurry very much. They're actually quite sharp and you're not going to be able to see it on a 1080p video that's kind of compressed for YouTube as well. But maybe I'll post a 100% crop in the written article for you to check out. And the key to achieving this lack of blurriness while balancing it out with the stars is the, the balance of ISO and shutter speed trying to find out how long your subjects can hold still without blurring and yet still have a good exposure for the sky. And this is my sweet spot. This is my starting point usually. ISO 3200, one second and f2.8. Sometimes you can pull off two seconds or four seconds, but what you have to have, and this is key, this is key here for the single exposure method, you have to have almost complete darkness on your subjects themselves. If there's any ambient light, say if, if I were on the beach near a pier or a, a boardwalk or something and there was any lamp posts nearby, then this photo would not work because this exposure would cast light all over the uh, ground here and it would really start to blur people's faces. So what this, it looks like they're just standing here by the light of a lamp or something, you know, near a, a lighthouse or something. But what this actually is, is they're standing in pitch darkness with no lights around and I'm using a flash to illuminate them. That is the key in getting these types of exposures at one second or two seconds and having the subjects turn out sharp. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't I just use flash wherever I am and then I'll freeze the subjects. Well, that doesn't work if the ambient light is still bright enough to affect their faces. Because if you want to get stars in the photo, then you're going to have to expose quite brightly for the stars and that will allow the ambient light to cause their faces to blur and any slower than like a half a second or an eighth of a second depending on how uh, steady the subjects are. Sometimes you can pose them sitting down and resting their heads together and I'll get into that in another tutorial video as well. But for this pose where they're standing up they're kind of connected so that they have each other you know they're kind of uh, they're not swaying back and forth too much but they still are standing up so they need to hold pretty still for this one second exposure to work. But anyways, once you get them into complete darkness, near darkness, and then you have some flash to illuminate them, then you should be good to go around this range of exposure. The next step is how do you actually illuminate them? I tried this shot with the flash at 128th power. That's the lowest power on most hot shoe flashes. And most strobes don't even go down below a 16th power or something like that. I tried shooting this photo with an umbrella or a diffuser, you know, at a 128th power and it was actually far too bright and it kind of blew out their faces. So you know what I did? I bounced the light off of a cliff side that was over here off camera 
and that gave a nice illumination over their faces. It's kind of soft. It looks uh, it looks pretty nice and uh, gentle. And that allowed me to cut the flash power down very significantly. I probably lost, you know, five or six stops by turning the, because the, the, the cliff side is uh, 20, 30 feet away from the couple. So instead of having the flash pointed right at them from 10 or 15 feet away, it's coming at them from 30 or so feet away and it's bouncing off of a, you know, warm, dull colored, not pure white rock wall. So I probably had to bump the flash back up to 16th power or, uh, 30 second power or something to actually get back and illuminate them but it works much better that way and if you don't have a cliff that's conveniently right next to you to bounce your flash off of or a wall or a house or anything you can use a reflector or uh, anything bright and white just point the flash at it and start trying out different uh, angles and different exposures different flash powers so there you have it folks that's how i would create a shot like this in a situation where I want to get this all in a single exposure. I hope you'll agree that it's actually quite simple if you can find the right conditions and use the uh, and know where to start with your camera settings. Like I said, this is my magic uh, formula right here, ISO 3200, about one second, 2.8, and a wider of ultra wide angle lens works best. Because if you try and do this at a 50 millimeter lens or a 35 millimeter lens, you will exaggerate blurriness. This really only works, I should have mentioned that earlier, this is one of the key aspects of it. This really only works for wider angle shots because the closer you get, the more your slow shutter speed will notice the fine blurry movements in the human body. So to get these shots, I prefer to stick to 14 or 16 or 18 millimeter, whatever your widest ultra wide angle lens is. 24 millimeter can pull it off if you back away from your couple but I prefer to go a little bit wider. So that's that. Now I have two images here and let's go really quickly into see what the original unedited uh, image looks like. I'm gonna hit D to bring up the develop module. You can see I've got, a, uh, oh, I've got some uh, airplanes here. I'll have to Photoshop those out later. But what I mainly wanna show you is the preset system, the SLO Lounge preset system, how I'm going to get this image perfect in hopefully just a few seconds for you. What you'll notice is I've got some quite a serious vignetting correction. And that's because I have the uh, Rokinon 14 millimeter lens here. It's the Samyang profile on a Canon camera, even though I'm using a Nikon camera, because this is the only one I could find. But this allows me to uh, unwobble the horizon. You can see how the horizon gets all wobbly. But to, to finish this, what I, to fix this, what I need to do is I need to actually dial the vignetting way down like that somewhere around there maybe uh where were we something like that looks good and unfortunately because this is a, a weird setup i can't do this automatically by just clicking the tools and mixology in the slo lounge preset system usually i can just turn on the profile correction for an for most lenses that are automatically recognized all right let's get into the foundation presets uh, of the slo lounge preset system and let's see if we can get this done in just a little bit I want to do, I would, I would do soft, you would think I would do soft foundation, soft stylization, etc. because this is a portrait, but because they're so far away from the camera, I'm actually going to use the vivid foundation presets. And then all I'm going to do is dial it back a little bit because I want a lot of these settings. I just want a little bit less of the contrast and vibrance. So that's it. I'm done right there with creating a solid foundation. The next thing I want to do is just bump up the exposure a little bit. I think maybe plus five, plus one, that looks great. And then now that I've done this, let's go back and dial down the vignetting just a little bit more. And so I'm surprised I'm adding so much vignetting, but actually, oh, let's uh, go back, go back there. Actually, the stars look, star images like this sometimes look weird if you have absolutely no vignetting whatsoever. It almost looks like it's CGI, you know, like somebody just photoshopped it in. So I do prefer a tiny bit of vignetting in my images when I'm creating a star portrait like this. Hold on, I'm gonna hit Q and kill this airplane here because it's just really bugging me. It looks like a UFO. And I'm gonna kick that one. And I think there's another one right here. Let's kick that one out. All right, there we go. So really, I don't have much else to do compared to that uh, the edited image that I showed you earlier, except obviously I need to dial my white balance down and somewhere right about there looks good, maybe somewhere in between. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
use graduated brushes, what I the first thing I want to do is darken stuff down in the foreground here because when you're bouncing off of a cliff wall, you're going to have lots of flash spill. So I'm just going to double down and do this, you know, once, twice. Uh, do one straight up from the bottom like that. Just do one maybe here from the corner. Uh, maybe that one uh, is better off at a, as a uh, negative 0.5 or something like that. Just turn it down here. That's great, getting that uh, getting that focus right on them. And then I'm going to turn it around for the last one, and I'm going to do maybe a plus 5 and just barely brighten this up like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak this and I'm going to give it a little bit of saturation. I'm going to bump it a little bit in the blue direction. And usually when I try and blue in the sky, I just created a new word, blue in. When I blueify uh, the sky, I also like to bump the tint up a little bit because it gives it that post sunset type of look. And there we go. Oh wait, you know what I should do? I should definitely crank up the noise reduction in this. Well, I think that might be too far. Let's, let's just give it a little bit right here. What I like to do is zoom in once that's done and just kind of check it out a little bit. Yeah, that looks great. And there you have it, folks. That was a quick edit. Thank you all for tuning in. And we'll have more videos on night star portraits coming very soon. Stay tuned, folks. Bye.